So we're a week and a half away from Justin Gagey versus Tony Ferguson part two at UFC 300. And it's time for me to give my breakdown and prediction for this fight. Now, all jokes aside, I'm actually a lot more interested in this matchup now that I know for a fact that Max Holloway has been bulking up for longer than this fight has been even announced to the public. He's been bulking up for a few months before the announcement. It was necessary for Holloway to bulk up. And we're seeing these photos on social media of Max Holloway looking jacked. And, you know, listen, I think people are kind of exaggerating how big he is. They're acting like he's Mr. Olympia all of a sudden. He's in some downlighting with a pump in the gym. All right. He's looking lean, which is the good thing, which is a far cry from the Max Holloway that we saw in 2019 fighting Dustin Poirier, who was just a fat featherweight. Now that I know Holloway's been bulking for a while, for like six months, and he's taken some necessary time off to get ready for this division. And it's a really tough test for him. I mean, think about this. He's been fighting featherweight contenders that don't have a lot of hype for years now. And he's been losing to Volk and fighting a featherweight contender without a lot of hype. Rinse and repeat. Now he's fighting one of the marquee names in the lightweight division. New weight class, BMF title, one of the biggest cards in UFC history. This is perfect for Max Holloway. Mental, Mentality-wise, this is a perfect fight to get him up. Not that he needed it, but I'm just saying if there's anything that could get Max Holloway to show a whole new version of himself, a whole new level, it's this one. So I am interested in this, and I don't think he's going to get turned into Tony Ferguson. I think this is really competitive. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about before we get deeper into this bulk, because... The last thing I'm going to get into is the X's and O's, the breakdown, my official prediction, but I really wanted to talk about the bulk of Holloway. But before we talk about that, we need to talk about the time off of Justin Gagey. We talked about just now how Max Holloway is in the perfect matchup to be the best version of himself ever. Change of scenery, new weight class, a killer like Justin Gagey, that's a guy that's scary as hell to face, that seems to have caught a new wind, right? But... How long has it been since Justin Gagey has fought? It's been damn near a year. Holloway's been out for like nine months, but he's needed to be out. He's needed to bulk up. I want a long layoff for the guy moving up a weight class. For Justin Gagey, who caught a new wind last year, who kind of like was the best version we've ever seen at the age of what, 34, 35? I want that guy to stay active and he's not done that. He's been Kai Kara France, elf on the shelf mode, for like 10 and a half months. He fought July last year and he had a lot of momentum. And he's probably been thinking about, dude, I'm going to fight Makashev. And he was sitting out waiting for that opportunity. And now, you know, the UFC held him out for UFC 300. 35, that tends to be the age where fighters start to slow down. Or maybe they don't have the same heart, the same desire and grit at the age of 35. That's Justin Gagey's age. Max Holloway, 32 years old. Okay? Like Justin Gagey, maybe he can get a second wind in his career. Not that he necessarily needs it, but it's possible for him to still make some serious evolution in skill. Right? Whereas at this point, I don't know how much better Justin Gagey is going to get. And not only has Justin Gagey been out for a long time, and he's been inactive, well, he's fighting someone that's let's be honest, he kind of uses a pipsqueak, right? Like his first reaction to the idea of fighting Max Holloway was, ah, I don't want to hurt Max. I would say Holloway, but I don't ever want to fight Holloway. So why not? Mm, I don't know. I just don't ever want to, I don't want to punch him. Just too nice of a guy or? Nah, I just don't. It's not necessary. <laughs> man i mean i like the guy i showed him around colorado i don't want to hurt this guy he's a good friend of mine let's let little max be right whereas you bring up a dustin poirier fight you bring up an islam makashev fight that's sending a shiver down his spine and he gets scared and that's really waking him up remember when he fought tony ferguson they gave him the call when habib pulled out <laughs> habib pulling out they gave him the call when habib pulled out and he said that he like shit himself and he was like super scared but it helped him get ready for that fight, right? When he fought Habib, his heart rate was like through the roof. Max Holloway, Gagey's looking at him as someone that's not that dangerous. I've listened to interviews from Justin Gagey, and, and yes, it's true, Holloway doesn't have KO power, 
but he can overwhelm people. And Gagey said, although I know this guy could overwhelm me and like bring me into deep waters and I got to have a good gas tank and I got to train hard for this. I'm not scared like I normally would be. 35-year-old Justin Gagey, who's had 10 months off, who caught a second win last year and had momentum, who's now been out, is not scared of his next opponent in Max Holloway, who, on the other end of things, has the perfect storm to get him to evolve as a fighter in a new weight class. I just thought that that was something that was really interesting to talk about and bring up just because... If this is a mental battle, I mean, I think Holloway probably has the edge going into this one, you know, because I think he's got a lot more respect for Justin Gagey. I don't know how much respect for Gagey or how much respect for Holloway Gagey has. I'm sure he has respect for him if you were to ask him. But my point is he's not scared of this fight. And maybe he should be. Maybe he should be. And I'm kind of talking myself into wanting to pick Max Holloway. But I'm not. I'm not going to pick Holloway. It's a really close fight, dude. It's a close fight. But the reason I, I have to go with Gagey is because I'm not seeing this Holloway with power coming to fruition. I'm not really seeing that. Now, we haven't seen it yet, and I, I technically can't give you guys the answer on whether or not he has power now at 155. But, you know, we're talking about Holloway moving up a weight class. It's not all positives. Most of it can be. When people move up, they tend to have success. Holloway was a lot more competitive against Dustin Poirier than people like to think. It's like the casual thing. I hate to say that word, but, you know, the people that will say things like Holloway got massacred by Dustin Poirier. They clearly just didn't watch the fight or they only saw it once and haven't refreshed their memory. He was competitive with Poirier. He absolutely was. But, um, again, Holloway, I don't think he's going to have a lot of power moving up to 55. We rarely see people move up a weight class. From one fight to the next, maybe not over the course of a career, like Charles Oliveira, for example, who has eight years to build up into a lightweight frame, and then he starts to develop this crazy KO power, whereas he didn't have that at featherweight. But we rarely see fighters move up and in the course of one fight to the next have tons of pop. We didn't see that with Adesanya when he fought Jan Blachowicz. We didn't see that with Volkanovsky when he fought Islam Makhachev. We rarely see it. We rarely see it. Now, usually they have a speed advantage. Fair enough. But for Holloway, who's not used to carrying a lot of muscle, Holloway's naturally a very skinny guy. There is a worry that I have for him that he's not going to be as fast carrying this new muscle. It's one thing if you just have a lack of a weight cut like he had in the Poirier fight, and maybe his speed didn't look a whole lot different, right? But when you have more muscle... It just requires a lot more energy for you to use it. And Holloway's probably put on maybe like five pounds of solid muscle or whatever in the past six months that he's going to be able to maintain going into this fight. Five or six pounds, I'm guessing. What if he's a little bit stiffer with the way he's throwing his punches? What if his combinations aren't so fast and snappy? That is definitely something to think about. Is that going to be a huge difference maker? Is it going to be that noticeable? Maybe not, but he may not be like the same fast guy we saw at 45 necessarily. And his power, as I said, some people expect him to have more thud on his shots. I think he will too, but I don't think Holloway's just going to smoke Gagey with a one-two in the third round and like spin his head back and knock him the fuck out. Or, you know, maybe he could rock Gagey at some point in this fight if Gagey overextends like he tends to do sometimes throwing his big winging hooks, and I could see Holloway countering him like he did to TKZ when TKZ was extending with his big winging hooks. Because when Holloway sits down on a shot, he does generate a good amount of power. But again, in that fight with TKZ, TKZ ran at him with no defense whatsoever. It was the least defensively minded approach to a round I've ever seen in my entire life. You can't compare TKZ's approach to the third round with Max to Justin Gagey's approach these days, which is a very defensively minded fight. And that kind of brings me into why I am going to pick Justin Gagey in this one. Okay. Again, we're talking about Holloway's ability to hurt people in fights and, you know, Gagey gets rocked every now and then. Gagey has a really good chin. His chin held up against Dustin Poirier and that fight didn't really go on that long, but it held up. He took some big shots yeah, he kind of got stung with a straight left in the first round, but it wasn't anything serious. He recovered within a second or two. He didn't get rocked at all by Rafael Faziv 
And he took some powerful shots in that one. He took some flush knees to the chin, some head kicks, and some really big Rafael Fazeev meaty hooks. Nothing, no reaction. Wasn't rocked or hurt that badly in the Michael Chandler fight. Sure, he was sent flying against Charles Oliveira, but again, Oliveira, massive lightweight that had been, again, we talked about how he moved up. Um, fast, massive lightweight in his prime, threaded the takedown. It was a little bit different in that fight. Holloway just doesn't have that same sting. He's not going to have the Oliveira shotgun power. Holloway landed like 500 significant strikes against Calvin Cater. I know Cater's tough, but at a certain point, like what is it? Every single featherweight has a granite chin these days? Is that what we're going to start saying? He landed like 500 significant strikes on him and he couldn't knock him down. <laughs> like, listen, I hate to say it, but Holloway doesn't have pillow hands. He's got fruity pebbles. Holloway hits you. It's like you're eating a fruity pebble for breakfast. And yeah, you don't want to get hit with too many of them. But the point is, he doesn't have a lot of sting. Where with the approach that Holloway's been taking recently, that I've actually noticed has a lot less volume. I mean, he's throwing a lot less. And I think it's to do some damage control towards this part of his career. He doesn't want to get hit as much. He's been making other improvements in his game. His defense has gotten better. So that's all good. But because Holloway is taking a lower volume approach, meaning he's less willing to put his chin on the firing line and move forward like the constant downhill fighter he once was, I think that with the lack of power that is most likely not just going to level up tenfold in this fight just because he's had six months to put on five pounds of muscle, right? A pillow-handed puncher. All of a sudden, he, he, come on, he's not going to turn into uh, Francis Gano or whatever. I think that the lack of power with the lower volume for Max, who is much more eager to kind of sit on the outside for half of the fight, he still will get in his opponent's grill. He'll still, uh, he'll still let go some combinations, but he's going to the body a lot more. And that's great. That's great for putting points on the board, absolutely. But I'm seeing these little fruity pebble shots to the body from Holloway a lot more than I used to. I think that with Gagey, who has a very similar amount of volume, you can literally look at the stats to back that up and look at their last couple of fights. I know that the stats don't always tell the story and they're not always accurate, but the stats confirm what I was seeing when watching their fights back. Holloway's volume is not insane like it used to be, right? It's not insane like it used to be. He's not putting the same type of gap over these opponents. And uh, Justin Gagey, like Holloway, we know has a much more defensively minded approach to his fights compared to what he was like when he first got in the UFC. I mean, he's literally said, I just think about not getting hit in my fights. That's what I do in my fights consciously. I'm a defensive minded fighter first. The volume, the offense, it comes naturally. I'll find the openings. But as long as I go in there and I do my best to be a good defensive fighter, I end up doing really well. So both guys are not as wild as they used to be. They're much more tit-for-tat, pick the openings. Holloway doesn't have a ton of sting to get the respect from Gagey. I think that Gagey is going to be having a field day when they trade in the pocket, which is going to be every once in a while. When Holloway throws a combination at him, I think Gagey is going to have a field day countering with a big left hook, the same left hook he was tagging up Tony Ferguson with. I think he's going to be able to land those counter overhands, right? And I just see Gagey's shots in this tit-for-tat battle that I'm expecting, where Holloway's not as eager to kind of march forward and move downhill always, to put tons of pressure on his opponents, and to kind of force them into that serious slugfest. I think that it's going to be a, 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 I think it's going to be an even keel pace where Gagey's comfortable in the five rounder and Gagey already trains at altitude. He's already got phenomenal cardio. I think the pace is going to be comfortable for him. And I think he's not going to get stung often in these scenarios where they're exchanging. Like, a, for example, in his last fight against Dustin Poirier, he was getting stung in some exchanges in the first round. Maybe not rocked that badly, but he was getting stung. Poirier was getting his attention with a couple of those shots. I don't see Holloway having the same ability to do that as consistently as Chandler, Fazeev, and Poirier. And Gagey's chin is holding up in those fights. He's got a great chin, okay? I know people think of him like, you get rocked all the time. Not really, though. Not really, though. Essentially, I just think Gagey, I think he's going to have such a significant power advantage in this fight 
that even though they're going to be kind of even on volume, Holloway's not going to have the bite down on the mouthpiece style that he used to, to where, if anything, deep into the fight, he can kind of, after Gagey has taken some sting off of his shots, move forward and, and fucking bring that pressure to him and kind of break him and put the volume on him and just get to his gas tank and kind of force him to bring out Rufus. Rufus is that old mentality Gagey has from the copper mines that just loses his mind in the octagon and starts slugging. I don't think Holloway's going to do it. I don't think I think Holloway's a little bit too smart for his own good, potentially going into this one. And I just see Gagey's shots being so much more impactful than Max's that the judges are going to take notice of the damage that Holloway's wearing. And they're going to take notice of the effect that the shots have on Holloway as opposed to the effect that Holloway's shots have on Gagey. And even if Holloway slightly outpoints Justin Gagey, Gagey's going to have much bigger moments where the crowd's going to be freaking out. Oh, shit. He just landed that absolute nasty uppercut. We're going to have the commentators talking about, how did Holloway eat that? Oh, my. Oh, Joe. Joe, how did he eat that, Joe? This man's chin. They're going to be talking about his chin. <laughs> Whereas when Gagey gets tagged... Bisping is going to say, that's a nice little crafty one-two for Max, right? Nice little crafty one-two. They're going to be talking about Max being crafty. They're going to be talking about the chin when Gagey lands, okay? That's the thing. And I think Gagey's going to win a decision on damage. I don't think he's going to turn him into Tony because Tony has, like, I mean, Tony's defense just was not that great back in the day. He's not got the same boxing. And Holloway's defense is really fucking solid, man. He does have some great defense. In that final exchange where TKZ's running at him and we think TKZ's landing a lot of those shots, Holloway's slipping them. He's getting out of the way. He's just making a miss. He's got great instincts in the pocket, but so does Gagey these days, man. So does Gagey. And I don't see this moment where Holloway just, with some more thought on his shots, just smokes him with a one-two, spins Gagey's head back. Gagey's rock. Holloway's up against the fence. Teen off, teen off. Even when that happens, I feel like Holloway had a moment against TKZ where he kind of rocked him in the first round. He dropped him in the second with a nice one, too. But, you know, TKZ's head at that point. He was, he was like a grandpa. Doesn't have a chin. At that point, he got caught with a nice little one-two of Max. But in the first round, Max rocks TKZ. And I know it's the first round. He rocks him and he doesn't jump on him at all. I feel like Holloway's so reserved in moments in his fights these days. Where if he rocks Justin Gagey, he's going to be like... He's going to do one of these like he did to Volkanovsky and he's going to do one of these and Gagey's going to recover a couple seconds later, right? So I think Gagey gets it done by decision. Also, we got to talk about the low kicks. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. Gagey doesn't throw that many low kicks anymore like he once did. At one time, he was throwing 30, 40 a fight. Nowadays, it's like you're lucky to see a single low kick in a round from Justin Gagey, so... Max used to kind of be open to leg kicks, not as much anymore since he's changed his stance and he's a lot lighter on that lead leg and he can check him easier. I still think that because Gagey looks at Max Holloway having those very skinny legs, that's just going to be a, a target point in the training camp that they have. They're going to be thinking of Max, skinny Max, likes to move downhill, likes to put together volume, let's get rid of the base, let's get rid of the base. I think he is going to up the ante with the low kicks going into this one. Maybe it was harder to do that against Fazeev, especially when Fazeev's swinging bombs on you and he's got an extra bit of thud and he's also got the Muay Thai style. Maybe they were thinking he might check these kicks. Charles was able to check the kicks. Holloway, I'm sure he's got decent leg kick defense. I'm sure he can slide out of the way. I don't think that, you know, we're going to see a gagey leg kick TKO. I don't think the leg kicks are going to be that devastating because he doesn't throw them as often. But I think that they will definitely take away some of the movement of Holloway, 100%. Holloway's kicks, on the other hand, they're just not that impactful, right? He, they're, they're good for volume. They're good for points, but they're not that impactful. The chin for Holloway, I think, is going to hold up. I don't think he's going to get KO'd. So, yeah, I, I, that is my breakdown for this fight. I think it's going to be pretty competitive, but I don't see Holloway knocking Gagey out. It's possible. I don't see it happening. Can Gagey knock Holloway out? I don't see that happening either. Holloway, is, in my opinion, is... Uh, I think he's a really smart fighter. I, I don't think he's going to entertain the slugging with Gagey. I don't think he gets KO'd. I think his defense is excellent. His chin is excellent. Moving up a weight class, lack of the weight cut. I don't see him getting put out or stopped up against the fence or anything like that. Or even a doctor stoppage because I don't see him taking the same amount of punishment as Tony did. Because when Tony was getting hit, his way to cope with it was, okay, let me fucking go after this guy. Now I'm going to get in his face. Holloway is going to be more reserved if he starts getting tagged up. So... 
Yeah. But I want Holloway to win. I'll, I'll leave you guys on this note. I really, really want Holloway to win, dude. Imagine how big this would be for his career. Because if Gagey beats him, Gagey's expected to beat him. Gagey won the BMF belt by head kick KO last year. I don't think because he's the favorite, it's going to be that crazy and impactful for his career. Whereas if Max wins, again, Max has been in this situation fighting unpopular featherweight contender after unpopular featherweight contender, getting beat by Volkanovski. He's kind of been maintaining his status in the UFC. He's not the biggest star. He's a pretty big name, of course. If he goes out there and knocks Justin Gagey out, gets the BMF title, is the new breakout star in the lightweight division, okay? And we see a Max Holloway KO that hardly anyone is really expecting. That is going to really blow him up as a star. It's really going to blow him up. And I want to see Max get a big win like this because he does have a lot of good wins and he's been winning a lot, but they're not massive wins. He has not had a huge win on a huge stage like this in quite some time. And for whatever reason, I'm not the biggest Justin Gagey fan. I love his fight style. I absolutely love his fight style. I do like him, but I always just end up rooting for his opponents because they tend to be more likable. So Max, one of my favorite fighters. I really want him to knock Gagey out. I do, but I don't think he's going to. All right. I hope he does. I hope he spins Gagey's head back, rocks him and jumps on him. And maybe we could see grappling. The reason I didn't talk about the grappling, by the way, can't believe I didn't, but I may as well do it now is because I don't think Holloway's going to shoot. And I don't think that, I think that the fucking BMF thing and the gentleman's agreement, the unwritten rules agreement between both of them is just going to be to stand. If Holloway does take AG down, though, I think he subs him. So let me just leave on that note. If Holloway does get a crafty takedown at some point or rocks Gagey and jumps on the neck, maybe winds up in mount or half guard, I think Gagey's as good as toast, okay? I think he's as good as fucking toast. So maybe, just maybe, we can see Holloway sub him because that would be the coolest thing. If he knocks Justin Gagey, or not knocks him down, but if he, like, rocks him and then... Gagey shoots like a panic takedown and Holloway gets the neck and transitions it into a, a Darce or an Anaconda. Like he almost had an Anaconda over TKZ and he subs him. That would be perfect. Okay. So I really want him to win. I just don't think he's going to guys. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Really interesting fight. I'm more hyped for it than I was in the past. Um, but yeah, also Holloway... Lost two rounds to Arnold Allen, and I can't believe I didn't mention this, but this is the last. This is actually the last thing I want to mention, which is in part why I'm picking Justin Gagey. Against these heavy hitters, Holloway, again, he ends up respecting the power so much that he, again, does never really start to make it a point to really move downhill and put tons of volume and pressure on guys and take those risks. And we saw that in the Arnold Allen fight. Second round, fifth round, Arnold Allen won those rounds. And forced Max Holloway to fight on the back foot the entire time because of the power, because of the speed. And I think that Justin Gagey, a much bigger version of Arnold Allen, who's similar in the in the sense that he's letting go like short burst combinations, one, two, overhand, left hook, just short bursts, but explosive with tons of power. That's what ends up getting Max Holloway to respect them. And he's less dangerous in those types of fights. I think that Justin Gagey's a much heavier hitter. Than Arnold Allen, though. So I think that the consequences to getting hit are going to be a lot greater in that in this fight. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for the breakdown. Full card picks coming soon. Until next time.